Welcome to our Truth in Action Bible study. So I am overjoyed and excited about what the Lord's going to say and do tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Sound like prayer meeting before we go to Bible study. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Father. We give you glory for all that you have done. We glorify you for being who you are in our lives. Thank you, Father, just for being the super God that you are, for being our healer, for being our redeemer, for being our deliverer. We just give you praise. We give you honor and give you glory just for being who you are. Not for what you've done, but for who you are. We thank you for what you've done, but we give you glory for who you are. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. Thank you for letting us gather around your word tonight. Say something and do something that would prick our hearts and turn us closer to you in every area of our life. We give you praise and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Clap your hands and give God praise right there. Woo, hallelujah. Got a little dangerous right there. It got a little dangerous right there. Realize God's been good, I mean, God's been good to somebody besides me and you. Hello, Facebook and YouTube. Uh, Thank you for coming to our Bible study tonight. It is so much going on tonight. We're just ready for the word. And so I am ready for what God's going to say and do. And we're logging in now. Many of you are logging in. There are people logging in all over. And uh, I'm just excited about being in the body of Christ tonight. I see Denai. I see Carol Thomas. I see Solomon. Uh, I see Maria. I see Manny Saeed. I'm just, I'm, I know we started a few minutes early. And we did that for a reason. Hallelujah. And so uh, I just want to make sure we're ready, ready to gather around the world. Hope you have your Bibles. Hello, Facebook and YouTube. Didn't mean to ignore y'all. I see y'all coming in. I want you to get your Bible, get your a pen, get your paper, get whatever it is. I want you to like, love, share, tag, and comment tonight so we'll know where you are and what you are doing uh, in the uh, Bible study tonight. We want to know right where you are. It will really be a blessing in your life. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. And so... Uh, most of you have seen the lesson. I want to talk about moving in the realm of the not known. It's, it's going to be a good, I, I talked about this years ago, but I, I didn't have the wisdom that I have right now. And when you gather wisdom, things change. Things change, and so I want to make sure we're ready for where we are. I know I started a little early, but I just, I got to get into it for y'all. I, I see Minister Ricks, I see Kenneth Davis, I see Carlos, uh, people only from everywhere. Listen, uh, it's going to be an easy night because you'll get a chance to rest your mind, but you'll get a chance to uh, connect your spirit. Um, we know too much sometimes. And it messes us up. And I'm, I'm, it throws me because uh, I think Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11, I didn't give them that, I don't think. I did. Chapter 11, in the beginning, it says, it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And it's the evidence of things not seen. Which means even if we can't see it, we know it's evidence. And if it's evidence, it's evidence of what we hope for, which means our expectation. And so if we have an expectation for it, then we can get God's uh, attention in whatever we're expecting. Got it? And so sometimes we get to a place, and I'm talking to everybody in the house, watch this. We know too much. We know too much. So when we know too much, we don't depend on God as much. And so since we know too much, we have to now prepare ourselves for God to do things differently. Because God told me, he said, tell them tonight, I'm not going to do it the way they're planning. I'm not going to go with their plans. I'm going with mine. Oh, my God. And so he's shifting us in the realm of faith. And sometimes the realm of faith is an area where things are not known. We hear it, we feel it, but sometimes things are not known, which means 
uh, God sets us in a place where we can go forward because reaching it helps us to reach the unreachable. Helps us seeing to see the unseen. Helps us to be doing what's undone. Expecting what's unexpected. And then end up knowing the unknown. And that's what God's going to open us up uh, open us up to tonight. If you have your Bibles, go to Mark chapter 8, verse 14. Mark chapter 8, verse 14. Hey, Chris Blake, I see you, sir. Williams Temple, I see y'all as well there. Mark chapter 8, verse 14 says, Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread. Neither had they in the ship with them more than one loaf. And he charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod. And they reason among themselves, saying, It is because we have no bread. Y'all got it? We have no bread. Verse 17 says, and when, and when Jesus knew it, he said unto them, Why reason ye? Because you have no bread. Why are y'all trying to have a conversation? Why are y'all worried about that we have no bread? Y'all missing it. Why are you talking about your lack? Do you perceive ye not yet, neither understand? Have ye, uh, have ye your heart yet hardened? Having eyes, see ye not. And having ears, hear ye not. And do ye not remember? He's saying, after all y'all have seen and heard and experienced, are y'all still in disbelief? Then he says, verse 19 says, when I break the five loaves among the 5,000, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? They say unto him, 12. And when the seven among 4,000, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? And they said, seven. He said to them, how is it that ye do not understand? Y'all missed it. How is it that you don't understand? If you look back at the verse, he says, when there were, tw uh, there were 12 baskets and 12 disciples. He comes back and says, when there were seven among the thousands, he said, I gave you seven baskets. In other words, he met every need. Yes, yes, yes. So why are you worried when he's a God that meets every need? Verse 21, and he said unto them, how is it that you don't understand? Verse 22 says, and he cometh with us, and he bring the blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand, and led him out of town. And when he had spit on his eyes, and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his eyes on him again, put, put his hands on him again on his eyes, uh, and the man looked up and he said, or made to look up, and he was restored and saw every man clearly. That simply means if God has to do it again, he'll do it again just to make sure you see. I, my prayer tonight is that you will leave here seeing clearly. You will leave this place tonight seeing clearly. You may not understand, but you will leave seeing clearly. You may not agree with it, but you will leave seeing clearly. Okay. And in that place in your life, when you start seeing things clearly, you really can't worry about what others see, what others say, and what others do. I'll say it again. You can't worry about what others see, what others say, and what others do. To read your Bible, Paul, in, uh, in Acts chapter 28, we may go there, we may not, well, we'll get there. Paul was bitten by a snake, and the people stood around uh, waiting on his response. Let me get y'all Bible. Acts chapter 28, please go there, go there, go there. We're going to work on this not known tonight. Real quick, Acts chapter 28, verse 1 says, And when they were escaped, uh, then they knew that the island was called Melita. And the barbarous people showed up, showed us, no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us, everyone, because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hanging on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt this man is a murderer. Y'all got quiet. 
the minute they saw him get bit by a snake, they began to judge the negativity that was in his life. They said, he must be a murderer whom thou hast escaped to see, yet vengeance suffered him. In other words, uh, see, that's why he got bit. He got bit because he's a murderer. That's what they say. That that's why people look at how you go through and say, oh, you're going through that because of, watch this, what they think. The Bible says, verse 5, I could stay there a good little while. I could stay right there a good little while. Because a lot of places you are in your life is because of what somebody else thought, said, or think. And sometimes God allows them to let you know what they see, say, think, or do. So you'll know who not to handle in a certain way. So verse 5 says, and he shook off the beast in the fire and felt no harm. I feel prophetic, Tiffany Ambrose. I feel like the next thing that happens or is happening in your life already, God say, I'm going to let you shake it off in the fire and you'll feel no harm. Now, here's the difference, Kiara. The fire is going to be the passion of your worship because you have no power if you don't worship. If you are a worshiper, you can shake that thing off in the worship and you'll have no harm. There'll be no residue of the bite. In Jesus' name, I feel the Holy Ghost. What the devil meant for evil, God said, no, no, no. I turn it around and bless you. You will have no evidence of the bite. Please sit down. It's Bible study. It says, and he felt no harm, and he felt no harm. Let your boss do what they're going to do. At the end of the day, you will have no harm. I told you, go to stall number three and shake it off in the fire, the fire of your worship. It's not going to be in your intellect or your degree. I'm coming. I'll get there in a minute. Verse 6 says, how be it they look when they should have, uh, they look when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked uh, a great while and saw no harm came to him, they changed their minds. Is there a possibility the only reason why you're going through what you're going through is because God's trying to get them to change their mind, but they can't see him because they hear you and your complaints. I'm sorry, turn me down some. I'm in Bible study. They hear your complaint. They hear you whining. They see your fear. So they stand where they are. It's not until they see something in you that they don't see in themselves that they change their mind. They see the enemy come but your response is not what they thought it would be. Your hand didn't swell. You did not die. You did not fall out. Because they're judging you by everything else Mother Kai. Everybody else who got bit died. But you didn't die. And the Bible said they changed their mind. Now just because they changed their mind without the proper notification, they, they, they still didn't have the right knowledge. They said, they, said, they said, he was a God. But here's the deal. I don't care what they think. As long as I know I got power to change their mind. I'll sow the seed of the mind change. Let God do the rest of it. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, my God, okay. And so that's when you got to realize that whatever God lets you go through, there's enough grace to get you through it. I didn't give him the song thing. Second Corinthians chapter 12 says, his grace is sufficient. Another word for sufficient means enough. Oh. If his grace is enough, there should be no time that we have complaints. We must get into the word to find out what God says. First Peter chapter 4 verse 10 says this, as every man had received the gift even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold. Here it is, grace of God. It's the grace of God. Be good. Second Corinthians chapter 6, turn to your Bible. If you're there, turn to your Bible. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 6. Ah, oh, yeah, I see you singing, Solomon. I see you, Brittany. Yeah. It says this. Y'all y'all at verse 6? It says, by pureness, by knowledge. By long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness, on the, uh, on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report 
and good report as deceivers and yet true. Here it is. As unknown and yet well known. Y'all didn't get that. As unknown, as yet well known, as dying, and behold, we live as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. All that, but always rejoicing. Even when we're poor, always rejoicing. Yet making many rich as having nothing and yet possessing all. He says, what I'm doing, I'm working you through something because if you get your rejoicing in place, it will balance out your life. And even though you may be poor, you'll be as many that are rich. Yet you're having nothing. It'll be as if you have it all. Y'all didn't grow up in the hood. Y'all didn't grow up where syrup sandwiches was the real sandwich. Y'all didn't grow up where bologna was the steak. We, we, now we have, what, what, what did you buy during the week? The, um, the, what do you call it? Yeah, rotisserie turkey. Rotisserie chicken, rotisserie turkey, honey chicken breasts. We bought all these, uh, these lunchable meats. When back then, all we had was two kinds of meat. Salami and bologna. And they both worked the same way. Cook till it pops. Y'all don't hear me. And we were happy as if we had. Oh, man. It's not until you can become, I'm going to mess with somebody's mindset. It's not until you can become happy with little that you qualify for much. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. So, so I want, I'm, I'm ready because God is ready to make somebody wealthy. I declare and decree, I know it. How do you know, Mr. Blunt, how do you know when God's ready to make somebody wealthy? When everything in the world is going against your wealth. When the government's shutting down, your job's acting a fool, your boss is tripping, your money is crazy, it's not equal enough, you know you make more but you can't see it. When all that's happening is when God's setting you up for him to say, I know it was only God. It's setting you up for God to get the glory. But here is the problem. I'm good, I'm good. Here's the problem. God says, but I'm not going to tell you how I'm going to do it. I'm going to leave you in the unknown space. We are moving into a realm called unknown. It's the realm where you trust him. See, 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 I don't want to trust him when my back is against the wall. I want to trust him when I got space to move. Well, I want him to know I trust him before my back is against the wall. I don't trust him when I'm broke. I trust him when I have money. I don't trust him when I'm sick. I trust him when I'm healthy. I want him to know I'm stable. So, so he's ready to prosper some people. But he has to make sure that you're faithful where you are. Make sure that you're faithful. The problem is God is trying to show us uh, what he wants us to be like. And it's going to be kind of difficult for some of us. Most of us don't want to see ourselves. We want to see everybody else. And God says, no, I'm going to show you what you are to be like. And he will also wants to show us what he wants to do, but he shows us in steps now. He's not giving us the big picture. He's giving us the next step. So he knows if I can trust you with the next step, then I can trust you with the picture. See, most of us get the picture, and then what we do is cut out the steps, run and jump, and cut across the field. And God said, no, no, that was development on the steps. I can't go there that far enough. I wish I had some, I'm going to build me some steps right here. Um, I, I can't, I, mm, nah, yeah. Uh, that, that, there's there's, there's, there's uh, maturity on the step. There is patience on the step. There is trust on the step. And then there's understanding on the step. And without those, no matter what you get, you can't keep it. Because if your understanding is bad, you never end up saying thank you for any of it. You end up saying, can I have something else? You know how your kids are. The more you give them, the more they want. So you have to get yourself ready for what God's going to do. Show, so God can do it the way he wants to do it. Because he's going to put you in the realm of the unknown. Or the realm of not knowing. Now, here is the crazy part about God. I love when God talks to me prophetically. He says, because you don't know does not mean it's not known. 
Hey, this side's kind of strange. Because you don't know does not mean it's not known. It may be known just not by you or not by you yet. Okay. So God gives you a little. You're still not happy. Gives you a car. You're still not happy. Y'all quiet. It gives you a place to lay your head. You're still not happy. Y'all quiet. Give you a little money in the bank. You got a little credit card. And you're still not happy. He gives you your right mind every morning. And you still not happy. Watch this. You have a coach to stay positive, And you still not happy. You got a pastor that consistently pours into you. And you still not happy. You have a prophet that walks in it heavy and proven and living it. And you still not happy. I'm speaking in abundance. And you still not happy. I'm speaking increase. And you Still not. Y'all missing it. And you, you, I'm, I'm speaking how you're going to be blessed and you still. I'm speaking you shall have the, to your shame, you shall have the double. And some people are still. And you're still saying to yourself, if I can just catch up on these bills. You got all of that. And your answer is, if I can just get ahead. And God said, I've given you all the tools. <laughs> In abundance, I, if I can just get these bills, if I can just pay off these three credit cards. God said, I gave you that money last time. You went and bought a cruise. You couldn't afford to go with somebody who couldn't pay for it. And you spent the money, and now you're mad about you not having what you need. You had it. The question is, what did you do with it? Hmm. So what's happening? How, how, how am I staying in the area of being at the realm of not known too long? See, the realm of not knowing is different than the realm of unknown. Not knowing means it could be present. I'd have to get work to get to it, but not knowing means it could not be there at all. I'm, I'm going, I'm going. So what you're doing, you're talking yourself out of believing God beyond yourself. You're talking yourself out of giving God an opportunity to move you in faith toward abundance in spite of what's going on in your life. Because right now, you don't know. Right now, you don't wrote Romans chapter 4, ooh, verse 16. Romans chapter 4, verse 16. If you're on here, would you do me a favor? Uh, if you're on the live, would you please like uh, and share the post real quick to bless somebody? Uh, yeah, like, share, and tag somebody who owe you money. If the Lord bless them and fix their heart right, they might give you some of the... Okay, I'll leave you alone. Romans chapter 4, verse 16 says this. Therefore, it is... Uh, are y'all there? It is of faith that it might be by grace to the end of the promise uh, might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Remember, Abraham is the father of faith. He's the father of us all. Come on, come on. He's the father. Okay, uh, okay, okay. The faith of Abraham, which is the father of of us all. Verse 17, as it is written, remember that, don't forget that, remember that. Um, uh, verse 17 says, that, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Good class. Verse 18 says, who against hope believe in hope. Which means he had every reason not to believe. But against his own doubt, he still chose. And some days you got to just tell the devil, go back to hell. Today I choose to believe. I know my job is crazy. I don't feel like it. My back is tripping. My money is crazy. My husband, my wife is stupid. My kids are tripping. At the end of the day, I don't care. Against all that, I still choose. And I'm choosing to believe, not knowing how it's going to turn out. I'm ready to have church now. I'm choosing to believe not knowing what the outcome is going to be. But because I believe, I know it's going to be the outcome he's playing for my life. Because my stupidity didn't change his plan. My dumb days don't change his plan. He said, I know the thoughts I think towards you. So he, my stupidity doesn't change his thoughts. His plan is still on task. I'm just off. 
And the sooner I get off, the sooner I can experience everything on the journey he has for me. Even though right now, I don't know. Let's read the Bible. It says, it says, verse 19, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah. In other words, he is rehearsing in his mind all of the reasons why what God is promising cannot happen. He said even the deadness of Sarah's womb, he's already put death in there. The Bible says in verse 20, with all that, the Bible says he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. In other words, he didn't fall for the okie doke of the enemy. But he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Y'all missed that. That means he had every situation and every reason not to believe. His own womb, his age, his wife's womb is dead. And the Bible says he still chose or made a choice to believe. So he says, and he didn't just believe, watch it, y'all. He, verse, 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 verse 20 says he's, he's, uh, he's standing like the promise of God through unbelief. But was strong in faith. Watch this. Here is how strong he was. Giving glory to God. Because many of us say we're strong in faith, but we silent. I'm in your house. I'm, in your, I'm coming to your closet in a minute. I'm, your living room looks real good. Your kitchen looks spotless. But you got stacks of clothes and shoes unmatched in your closet. I'm coming to your closet in just a minute. He says he was strong in faith with all the reasons not to. He still gave glory to God. Not knowing how this thing was going to happen. Not knowing how he was going to give seed to a dead womb. The Bible says, verse 21, and being fully persuaded. Here is what kept him strong in faith and giving glory to God. He was fully persuaded that what, he, what God had promised, he was able to perform. He was able to perform. He was, which means he had the ability to perform. Oof. Okay, because God can only move in your life at the level of your expectation. He's not going to force you. He's not going to make you do. No, no, no. He says, I'm going to meet you at your level of expectation. And that's what your faith is for. That's why it says, now faith is the substance of things expected, hoped for, and the evidence of things, even though it's not seen. It's still proof that it exists. So what it says is, whatever you need, God is able to make it happen. The reason why we have not is because we, good class, good class. We don't ask God because we judge ourselves. We judge ourselves, we feel negative, we look at our past, and then we have unsolicited conversations with a party pooper. Say it again. We have unsolicited conversations with the devil. How you going to ask God for that when you just did that? How you going to ask God for that when you just did that? I'm going to do it just like this. God, I'm sorry, but you know I need that. Then leave it up to God to see if he judged me the way you did or if grace steps in. I don't hear nobody. So let me, let me show you. So, so, so here, here is where God makes things happen. But it happens according to us. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. I'm sorry, I'm talking real fast right now. I'm hyper early. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. Are y'all ready? It says this. Every man, according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly. Can I testify for a minute? Take me, bring me back. You know, Sunday we had some church. Sunday before last, I said, all hell break loose. Then I said, the increase is in your seat. Okay. We leave here. We're headed to eat. Some guests are coming to meet us from across to everywhere. And we're driving and we're... On the street, uh, we wouldn't went there. My wife, is my, I told her it was her fault because she picked the place. Uh, if she had let the spirit lead her, he would have took her somewhere else. But because she was in her flesh, I had to deal with Eve. 
Uh, <laughs> so there's this, these three cars on the side of me. Oh, man, this locked with this morning. Three cars on the side of me, so I can't get over. There's a hole, so I'm trying to avoid the hole. Must have been a wire in the hole. I turn quickly, and my front tire and back tire hits this hole. Bam, bam. And when it hits the hole, in three seconds, the car says, do, 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 do. Left tire, pop, whoosh, right tire, pop. We pull over into a church parking lot. That was the first thing. It's a Chinese church. I said, I don't care what kind it is. It's church. <laughs> Jesus, hallelujah, whatever it is. We pull over, and we pull over to the place, and I call this number I have in my phone. I call the guy. I say, hey, man, are you over in this area? Here's a flatbed because I don't, you know, can't, can't tow. Somebody going to be mad at me online. You can't, you can't drag. No, no. So I need a flatbed. The guy says, uh, I'm in Southwest. I say, well, I'll wait for you. He gets there, puts my car on the flatbed, goes through all of it. I, it's drivable because the front tire is the only one down. I put the car on the flatbed. Uh, he takes the car where we're going to get the tire done and everything. And I get there. And I say, hey, man, because I had cash. I said, how much you need, man? Uh, what, what's my bill? He said, nothing for you. Yeah. Well, I know 175, 200 is minimum flatbed, large flatbed for that kind of car. And you know they charge you based on your car. At, yeah. You didn't know that. Okay. Sometimes they go, okay, this car, right, I just give me 65. Remember when the tow truck said $65? Sixty-five, seventy-five dollars. Nah, but they see you drive. Oh, you. Yeah. That's two. <laughs> he said no charge. I said, man, no, no, no. He said no charge. I said, listen, you have kids. I said yes. I, said, I have two kids. I said, take these two twenties for your kids then. Yeah, yeah. He said, no, no. I said, take. He said, I'll take it. Okay, okay, cool. Leave there. Go eat. Finish eating. Order all my extra fix-ups. End of the end of the thing. I said the bill's been paid for. No charge. Yeah. Okay, cool. Go the next morning, get my tire looked at. The guy says, uh, I'm going through all your tires. You see your back tire has the same cut in it. It's a gash this big. He says, I don't understand how it's still rolling. The front tire is flat, back tire gash, the same big. He said, I don't understand. And these are not run flats on the back, so I'm not sure how it's still rolling, but this is covered, and we'll make sure that gets covered, even though it's not. And you just, okay, all right. So I'm saying, God, should I be, see y'all, y'all, I, I have a different flow, Care. Once I start hearing, no charge. Yeah. No charge. Yeah. No charge. Okay, I, I have to start going to places where the value is different. Because yeah. if I go get something bigger and say no charge, it's the same thing you'll do at the casino. If I go here, they say no charge. And then, I, say, I say, okay, God, what you know? God says, I'm working on something. I know, he said, I'm working on a testimony. Now, my mind, you could have you just gave me a testimony and let me keep my car. But in keep getting my car back, I started driving first to work this morning. Watch this. And I drove my car. We're on the back street in the dark. Talking about lights in the area. Talking about why they didn't put lights over here in the area. And the bus stops in front of us. And a guy gets out of the tr his truck and looks and then runs back. And I'm saying, maybe they're letting the kid out to get on the bus. That's what she said. Letting the child get on the bus. Letting the child out. And we look and we see. And uh, the man keeps running by. The bus finally coming with another bus. And they both go by real slow. We pull to the side, roll the window down, and hear a young man in the ditch screaming. Because the man had hit him and knocked him in the ditch. His bag was still. I said, now before we got to the bus, we already in tongues. We already, who, wh wh whatever this is, whoever it is, God, whatever it is, make sure he go home to see his parents. His parents did not get a phone call about him dying. He will not hemorrhage out. And this testimony, he will get to know who you are as God. And if this testimony don't get him, let it be a seed for the day he realizes you spared his life. We speak strength to him, to everybody. And the guy that stopped, we speak patience and peace to him. Are we? We had prayer in the car going. I said, well, honey, then people jumping out. Nurse jumped out. I said, we good now. Going to the school. Why? If I hadn't had my car, I'd have gave her her car. I look at everything connecting God one way or another. That's how I make sure I stay connected some kind of way, even if I'm hanging on by a string. Back to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. So here's where you start giving of yourself, not just your money. He says, every man, according to his purpose in his heart, let him give, not grudgingly or necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. God loveth a Cheerful giver. Here's verse 8. 
And see, most of y'all like verse 7. Y'all like the loving of a cheerful giver. I like verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. Y'all didn't even get that. Somebody should have been up screaming. Somebody probably should have been running. It means God turns all grace in your direction. That means every weakness in your life has grace on it. Every broken area has grace on it. Every mistake has grace on it. Every dumb day has grace on it. And all, he makes all grace abound toward you. See, and here's why he does it. That you always having all sufficiency. Y'all missed it. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That you always having all sufficiency. Oh, in all. Wait a minute. So why is it I'm complaining about my lack? If I'm in lack, I'm the reason. Here it is. That you may abound to every hit. Here's the reason why you don't have God's grace abounding towards your life and you don't have sufficiency in everything. It said that it may abound to every good work. We've been abounding to our own work. And the work has not been good. In this season right here, biblically, if you are having good work, God said, I got to make everything about everything goes up towards you. That you have all sufficiency. You have enough in everything concerning good works. The problem is we got our own works and they ain't that good. So God say, I can't let grace abound towards you because if I did, I'd be letting grace abound towards your flesh. So he says, and as it is written, he has his first abroad, he has given to the poor his righteousness. There it is again. His right standing remaineth forever. That's when God's abundance uh, gets you far beyond you. Y'all really got quiet. That's when God allows his grace to kick up abundance and it pushes you far beyond what you should. I still, other day, I sat down and thought about where I lived. I lived in City Gas in what we call the village. Okay. Everybody had one. South Park's village was on MLK. I don't what the name was. We just called it the village. On the north side, it was North Wayside, and we called it the village. It was where, uh, you know, yeah, you know, we lived in the village. Then we got a little house, then we shared houses with people. I said, God, you did all that. So I would just pull up to my house and tell you, thank you. Watch this. Watch this. Grateful, planning to move, but still saying, see, we think. The way I move is to get angry about where I am. Y'all got quiet. You think the only reason, and that's the mentality we have, the only reason why we shift and move in life is because we mad about something. We don't grow. I'm looking, I said, our house is, some days I go, honey, you sure you want to move? Because I think about where I came from. But then I think about what I want. And what I want is not where I, okay, y'all missing. So God's abundance goes beyond where you are. I'm coming, Dickie. It goes beyond your education. Huh. Watch this. Because even folk with education have hell on their job. Seems like if I get enough degrees, I would have to have that hell. It don't disqualify you. It just makes you a bigger target. It goes beyond your education, beyond where you are, beyond what you were taught. His abundance goes far beyond what you think, but you have to stand on what you're able to apply. And oftentimes, we know a lot of stuff, but we don't know how to apply it. We can repeat it, but we can't. Apply it. We can teach it to other people because it sounds good when they say, I didn't know that. But at the end of the day, we can't apply it. So the word says God is able, which means has the ability. 
to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think but it's according to the power that worketh eth get it now work it which means that power is not complete yet so we can't act like since i got this together i'm good that power say work it it, it means it continues to work it continues to mature. It continues to develop according to the power that worketh in us. Okay, testimony time. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Uh, I left Dow Chemical. Had a good job. I left Dow Chemical because I was getting married. <laughs> I was getting married. And uh, I said, I need to have a better job. I really did. I, was, I, I, I called Anitra Payne for something. And um, some people we knew from church worked there. She worked there. And... Uh, it was a company. I was at Dow Chemical on accident. So, we were in school. Compute, my, my dad told me, you can't stay here and not go to school. So my mother Kyle will tell you, even while I was in school at their house, I was running a juice company. <laughs> yeah, anybody remember that? I worked at Caltex. Caltex produced all the juice for uh, Cisco, for the hospitals, the great the orange and the fruit punch and all the juice for the schools in the carton. So I worked there. We could buy a carton for $3. A case of 24 for $3. So Maria, I would buy me four or five cases as much as my Hyundai would hold. Bring them home, put them in Mother Kyle's freezer in the garage and then sell them to people who had kids in school. Buy it for $3 and sell it for $20 with 36 in the case. You want fruit punch, you want orange, or you want grape? Which one? You, I got what you need. Had a re reoccurring customers. It, it, and, and I was just getting, I, I, was, I was, so I paid for my car. I had all this stuff with the car. She was mean. She was I said, you making money. You got to pay rent. I said, got to pay rent? <laughs> well, you, you got to pay. I said, mother, I got to pay rent. I got to make too much money. I was making good money. So I said, I got to get a job. We, we got, so I went to school. They said, you must fill out this application. Watch this. Here is where God moves in the not knowing. So I go to class. I'm doing computer work. Our test was that we, or our, our quiz or our final grade was we had to find a company on this list, pick the company out, and then do a resume with a cover letter. Here I go like a dummy doing the cover letter with the cover letter and then mailed it. Walked into class that day, middle on a Thursday or Friday, out of school, came back, they called, hey, uh, Dexter, they on the phone, which put you in the office. I'm like, who? Uh, the teacher in the office, they would look at you in the office, and what? Well, all of us in the class had to write, we were the, first, we were the top 10%. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Now, we were giving it, right, top 10%, we were top 10%. And so, they said, they said, they said we, we're looking for somebody uh, which has the qualifications that you sent us. I said, oh. Uh, I said, okay. They said, um, can you come for an interview? I said, sure. Um, who's calling? Because I didn't apply anywhere. So what I sent out on accident, watch this. I'm going to help some, somebody should get real happy. If, you, if somebody by you don't get happy, you should elbow them right in their throat. What I sent out on accident got answered by God. I had no intention. I just sent it and God said, I'll, I'll, I'll deliver it. Because the heart of the king is in the hands of God. which He turns it and have them call me when I wasn't expecting a call. So I go there and I go to work. I make good money. I'm, I'm making real good money. I, I, got a, I got an apartment. My apartment is so large. I got a sofa, love seat, Chester, and a, and a bed in my bedroom. Two closets. I'm laced. I'm, laced. I'm good. Here's in her closet. I'm, 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 two cars. I'm, I'm good. But now I'm finna get married. So I gotta figure out, I gotta make a change in my life. So I figured, I called Sister Payne. They said, I said, they, they talk smart to me, I talk smart to them. Wasn't on purpose. I said, hello, uh, this is Dexter Kyle. Is Mrs. Payne in? This is her boss. Who's called Mrs. Dexter Kyle? How, uh, how can I help you? She said, how can I help you? I said, Ms. Carver. I said, well, are y'all hiring? Since you asked me, how can you help me? Are y'all hiring? Just, just. Accident. Are y'all hiring? Sure. Can you come in tomorrow? Sure. What time tomorrow? 9 a.m. I'll be there in the morning, 9 o'clock. I'm calling on the phone call and get, get ready for an interview. Go in and get hired. 
got to come back to the company where the Jehovah Witness did not want to promote me. And walk in and say, uh, I'm resigning. I've always done this. And I'm resigning this Friday. You didn't give two-week notice. I wasn't coming back. <laughs> so, no, I, I don't work on Fridays. I'm le so Thursday is my last day. Then this Pentecostal woman comes and says, the boss says he wants to promote you. She said, he can, I'm, not, I'm not dollar hungry. And he ain't finna promote me and set me up. Promote me, have me buy a house and a car and get married, then fire me? No, tell him no thank you. As a matter of fact, I ain't coming Thursday either. <laughs> Went on my interview, got the job, and worked there. He would have not known this. Left one company, going to another one, not really knowing. <laughs> then my father dies 20 years ago. And here I go leaving that job to pastor this church not knowing. Not knowing, first thing, God told me to support you. Why? I said, man, I'm not going to do that. Not knowing. And God said, I'm going to do it all. I'm going to do it all. When you believe my word, I'm going to do it all. And I'm, I'm, I'm walking in on and under what he has done. Not knowing. Huh. Okay, I got to go. I got to move. I got to move. I got to move. I got to move. See, now I just freed some of y'all. Because some of y'all been trying to figure it out. While God already has it worked out, he just ain't told you yet. And he's not going to tell you. Ask me why. Because if he tells you what he's going to do, you're going to try and tell him how to do it. And if he don't do it the way you want to do it, you will circumvent him and go do it your way because you have a way you want it to happen. And you will mess up his will and miss his way for your life and then end up with your back against the wall and then want him to be your savior. Okay, so you have to simply believe. Somebody shout his word. Because <sighs> oftentimes, oh, where are we? Where are we? Gotta hurry. oftentimes um, we say God is our source. I said it years ago. I said during the pandemic, I declared and decreed again. Don't raise your hand because you probably ain't ready to listen either. Because all y'all got that hand raised on Sunday. God, hurry up and do it. Then that phone, I couldn't even do my walk. <laughs> I walked three miles, my phone never stopped ringing. Because everybody who said, well, some people said, do it, God, got done that morning. <laughs> well, why are you not expecting God to do what you asked him to do? Because you really didn't mean. <laughs> it sounded good on Sunday. It didn't feel good on Monday. Because your expectation didn't line up with your mouth. Okay, I, I'll, move. I'll leave you alone. I'll leave. Don't text me. Don't call me. Don't inbox me. Don't DM me. I ain't talking. I'm, I'm online. I see you, Emory. Keep having good church wherever you are. So, so now it's the issue that we have to know. We say God is our source. But God is getting ready to test you again and see if he's your source. The only reason why God tests you to see if he's your source is not to play games with you. It's because at the end of the world, he's going to have to be your source. Because nothing else is going to work. If you go, okay, I want to scare y'all. If you go in your Bible, there are some things that are supposed to happen before the end of the world. There are some things that are supposed to happen uh, that, that have to happen before the end of the world. And one of the things is what's happening now with Israel. Mother against father, done. Father against son, done. You know, uh, itching ears, done. That's one of the things that Israel is, that's why people are saying, pray for Israel. Pray Because if we don't get peace in Israel, the Bible says, when men shall, here's, here's how the world ends. When men shall say peace, the Bible say there shall be sudden destruction. You see, y'all don't, don't like reading Revelation. It's real. How, it, how the rest of the Bible real, but that part, because you avoid it, don't make it real. Don't make it not real. It's real. When men shall say peace, not saying praying for peace, when men say we all good, everybody's good. That's when the devil hits. There shall be sudden destruction. So God wants to find out now if you're really ready to be him really be your source. Because he will test you. So now is the time you got to change your thinking. 
Tell them, say, tell, tell them, say, say, listen, renew your mind, renew your mind. Psalms 51 verse 10 says this, create in me a clean heart and renew a, okay, you got to get it. Create in me a, which means I know mine has deficiencies. You got it? And renew in me a, that means I know mine is not perfect, so I need you to renew it. You got it? You got to renew it. You got to renew it. He says within me. Then Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says this. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye. I see you, Embry. I see you, Kirkdulu. I see you, Trigger Hood. By the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. A good, long time ago, I gave it to you a long time ago. Those are the three levels of the will of God. The good, acceptable, and perfect. The good, the acceptable, the perfect. The good is the one that's okay. You did the best you could what you had. Acceptable is the one you know it ain't the will of God, but God lets you make it. He accepted it. The perfect will of God is the when you do it against all odds and God lets grace bring you out. For I say through the grace given to me that every man that can say more highly than y'all too think, but think soberly according to as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith, which means that's my access key to the not known. It's the measure of faith. This is where we get it. Because when you work for God and you work with God, he reveals things to you sometime on a need-to-know basis. You know, you, 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 you don't just work on a job. Uh, you want to get something out of it. You got it? You don't work. I'm going to help somebody right here. You don't work uh, for the job. You just work at the job. And the problem is you get in your at and your for confused. You work at the job. You don't really work for the job. Because to work for the job, they must pay you for the job that you do. And nobody gets paid for the job that you do. You get paid what they got you to accept. That's how somebody else gets hired after you and makes more money than you. Because they wouldn't accept what you did. You accept this much, they wouldn't accept that. They wouldn't settle. Quiet, quiet. If you believe that your job is the only blessing channel for your life, that's the only way you're going to be looking for God to come through. You got to believe that's more. And when you believe like that, you are blocking open doors. The doors are open, but you blocking it. It's quiet. If you don't expand your thinking... You are limiting your abundance. Prove it. The Bible says, so a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So what your heart really believes, that's really where you live. I trust God, that's really where you live. That's really where you live. It's your level of expectation. Oh, I can't, that'd be nice right here. It's the, your level of faith. And you can't fake faith. Uh, we used to could. This is how we fake faith years ago. Now you can't even get gas to get to church to dance. Because <laughs> you don't even have faith for the gas. You can't fake faith because now the devil is putting things in your life because here's the deal. But Mother Kyle, years ago when we fake faith, we still draw people, with, we drew people with our fakeness. And they got here and got real while we still faked. Okay, okay. But so, so, so now the devil says, I don't want you even drawing people. So I have to show your fakeness to people. So people won't want what you need for real. You know people be saying, man, I ain't going to church, man. I ain't going to fake. Y'all playing with God. I ain't going to be playing with God. I ain't doing all that stuff. I ain't doing all that stuff. I'm, when I get right, I'm coming in. How you going to get right without God? And who say you'll get a chance to get in? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, 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 you're you not going to be able to fake it. You're not getting no husband with no faith. You may get a man, but you ain't getting no husband. Not with no faith. Ooh, you may get a car with no faith, but you ain't getting no automobile. It's quiet here. You ain't getting no house with no faith. Or you may get a house, you ain't getting no home. Why? Because you may get something you can afford. Why are you saying that? Because faith always gives you more than you ask for. Yeah, quiet.
out of here. Okay. He said, be it unto you according, in line with, in equal conjunction with, in parallel principle with, your faith. That means everything that you're going to get from God is going to be aligned with you. You are a um, reflection, an uh, outward reflex, reflection of your inward faith. Matthew chapter 9, verse 27 says that when Jesus departed, then, oh, Jesus, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. When he was coming to the house, the blind man came to him and said, Jesus said unto them, do y'all believe that I'm able to do this? They said to him, yeah, Lord. He touched their eyes saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. It wasn't according to his power. It was according to their faith. So we can no more blame Jesus. For where we are, would we have no, okay, okay. Verse 30 says, and their eyes were open, and Jesus straightly charged them, saying, see that no man know it. I don't know why he would tell them that. Is, is, is he being funny? Because truth be told, if, if you saw me like this, and I got healed, and I'm like this, I got to tell you nothing. Is that the one that was blind? I see you. I like your hair. Nice suit of shoes. Like your haircut. Nice. Nice glasses. I may not say it, but everything I do is going to represent I can see. Mm. Until you get to a place where everything represents, even what I don't know, I can see. You still blind. Oh, y'all, y'all get it, you'll 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 get it. And so he says, he says, he says, and their eyes were open. Jesus said, don't tell nobody. Uh, mm, and it's after the blind man said, uh, uh, after he says this, he touched their eyes. After he said, I believe. After he agreed with Jesus, then he gets healed. Mark chapter 4, verse 23 says, if any of you have ears to hear, let him hear. Verse 24 says, he said to them, take heed what you hear. Um, with, with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you, and uh, unto you that here shall more be given. I'm so excited what to do. For he that hath, to him that hath shall be given, and he that hath not, take the t uh, for, from him shall be taken even that which he hath. Verse 26 says, and he said, so is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground, and should sleep, and rise night and day. And the seed spring and grow up. Y'all reading the Bible? He knoweth not how. Y'all missed that part. God says, the work I do with your seed and your harvest, you, what you should do is just go to sleep. Because you don't know how I'm going to do it. But I am going to do it. Because here's the deal. Increase will come. And you don't have to know how. Faith will increase. And you don't have to know how. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 7. My last verse. Oh man I can't do all this. I'll meet y'all tomorrow morning. By faith Noah. Maybe not. Being warned of God. Of things not seen as of yet. Move with fear. So here's Noah. Doing what God said. Never knowing what it is. Had never seen a boat. Had never seen rain. But he moved with reverence. Fear, reverence. He moved with reverence, not knowing. Because here's the problem that we have with not knowing. When you don't know, you have to submit to follow instructions. Noah could not have missed any instructions. If he'd have missed one plank, one screw, one anything, the boat would have sunk. He followed instructions to the T because he didn't know. Here's the reason why God don't tell you some stuff. is because you already think. So he don't repeat with you. He don't have a conversation. He say, since, you, since you know, 
I'm just not going to say anything to you about it. I'll wait until you can admit. Y'all helping me preach the sermon. Let's go. He says, he says, he says, um, um, pastor, it's just, you know, I just have to know what it is. Uh, I know you preach. Give me a confirming word. Hebrew chapter 11, verse 7, right? Go to verse 8. It says, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance. So God sends him out to a place where his inheritance is without telling him. Because if he told him, he'd have left everybody. I almost would. I'd be like, my inheritance? Okay, I'm going to go get it. And I'm going to come back and get y'all. Depend on how much it is. I'm talking to the real people. I'm, I, I get my family in the middle. Let me go see how much, especially if we had an argument. Y'all quiet. We had a real argument. Let me go see how much it is, and then I'll let you know. I'll come back and get you. So he says, no. He says, he says Abraham, verse 8, obeyed, and he went out. Y'all reading? Not knowing whether he went. The same Abraham staggered not at the promise of God that God would give him a child, not knowing. The same Abraham prepared a sacrifice of his son, not, man, knowing. The disciples prepared the same fish, same two fish and the five barley loaves, not knowing how they would feed the people. Joshua obeyed and walked around, I almost walked around the screen, walked around the wall seven times not knowing how they would get in. Obeying God, but not knowing. The Bible said we speak the wisdom of God in the mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world until our glory. Verse 8 of uh, Corinthians, verse chapter, chapter 2, says, which none of the princes of this world knew. For if they had known it, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. If they would have known killing Jesus would have gave us everlasting life, they would not have done it. If they would have known piercing his feet would allow us to have uh, 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 have dominion everywhere we go, they wouldn't have done it. If they'd have known putting the spirit through his side gave us access to the blood of Jesus for healing, they wouldn't have, the Bible said, if the princes of this world knew, they would not have done it. Mm. And you got to be careful of people in your life. If they know something will bless you and they don't do it, they are part of the princes of this world. Oh, I'm trying to help somebody. But since they crucified him, we still got it right. Verse 9 says, it's written, I had not seen, ear had not heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things that God had prepared for them that love him. So they still crucified him, not knowing. If I was in a church somewhere, I'm, I'm done. You can play. Alan, if I was in a church, I'd just talk about it. How the widow gave her last to the prophet after saving her life, not knowing if she would live again. 2,000 years ago, a man hung on Calvary's cross on Golgotha's hill, making sure we had a right to eternal life, not knowing if we would give our life back to him. Yes, he said, for God so loved the world, he gave. Hoping we give our life back, but him not knowing while he hung there that we would or if we would. But he stayed on the cross. Regardless of how it felt to him, he stayed. And for just one minute, one minute, he said, look, 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 look. Father, why hast thou forsaken me? Take this cup. Just for a minute. Then he switched back. He said, oh, no, 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 no. Not my will, but thine will be done. Not knowing how many of us would decide I'll catch him later. He stayed on the cross. Mm. Not knowing. My daddy would say he could have called down legions of angels to get him off the cross. But he stayed there because he knew we would need the blood of Jesus in our not knowing days. My God. Days where things seem crazy, marriage is strained, money is strained. The world has no leadership. We have no government. And Israel is in war. And we are sitting ducks. And God said, I just need you to have faith in your know-nothing days. And today, we're in a place where we say, God, I don't know. God says, it's okay. I do. It's a day where we trust him in this season he's 
entering us into where we don't have any idea what the world's going to look like in five years. But we do know that his grace is sufficient. Hmm. It's enough grace for us. I see you care. It's enough grace to keep us and carry us among all that we've been through. And so, Father, thank you for even though we've not understood a lot of things, not understood how things were in our life and how they would be, not understood why people left and why certain people came, not understanding why we felt the way we felt, but God, you know, even in places where we did not know. Thank you, Father, for in our not knowing days, you were still present. And today we expand our faith. I hear you, Father. You will no longer have a small canvas to paint your big vision on. We now expand our faith where you're able to write on the tablets of our heart that that you desire to get out of us and use us to get your glory. So tonight, Father, for everything that we've been through, even though we didn't know what it was working on, we thank you. And the harvest of some things that you planted for us with our dumb days, our mistakes, our frustrations, our missing it, our not knowing what you were up to. Thank you for the harvest that you're about to bring to us because we trust you even in our dark days. When we could not see you, we still heard you. And our faith came by hearing. So we trust you in every area of our life. And we submit ourselves and our will to you. And we give you praise for those dark days now. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to rest in you. We trust you. We can't trace you. We still trust you, though. We don't need to know everything. We're going to trust you with our hearts and with our souls, with our minds and with our spirit. And we give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Maybe somebody online who, uh, who wants to be saved, you want to come first? Just come. And uh, I want to join church tonight. Or somebody just want to rededicate. I really haven't been tired with God. I don't want you to dedicate out of fear. Well, Israel's fighting the world from the end. Don't, 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 no, no. Dedicate out of love. Dedicate yourself to Christ who loves you. So if the world does not end when you think it should, you'll still have a relationship with the loving God. Amen. There may be someone who said they heard the word on tonight and yet you're not saved. You really want to be saved. So if you're in the building, if you will bow your head and close your eyes, and if you're watching, you can press a one on the screen. It is our desires for you to connect with the cross. And we know normally on Wednesday nights it's for believers, but there may be someone in the place who said, I want to get to know Christ on tonight. This is my night to do it. And if that's you, you can raise your hand while you're in the building. If you're watching, you can press a one on the screen. There may be someone who said, I am saved, but I do not have a church home. I want this to be that place where I come to worship. If you're watching, you can press the two on the screen, and we would definitely receive you in the house on tonight. We would have, If you're watching, we would have someone to reach out to you. Minister Ricks will reach out to you and make sure that you connect with the truth. It is our desire for you to know exactly who Christ is. And Father, we tell you thank you on tonight for normally on Wednesday night Bible studies is for all believers to come out and get fuel to complete their week. But God, on tonight, we extend your hand. We extend your grace to every person that is watching, that may watch this at a later time, that is watching even now, that you may say, they say, I want to connect with the cross. I want to connect with the truth. So, Father, we ask now and believe that you will come into their heart. 
we believe, Father, that you are, they, and we, we are looking for them to believe that you are God and God all by yourself, that you have proven yourself time and time to, again just to be good and merciful, and you've shown yourself to be mighty. So we tell you thank you that you are, they're receiving you into, our heart, into their hearts. And God, even in this place and even in this moment, we're receiving you into our hearts again, Father, letting you rest there, letting you abide in that place. We're thanking you, God, that you're coming in to those places that we've hidden so many times so long ago so we're thanking you God and know that they're connecting with you once you become their savior we're appreciating you even now father for you becoming the Lord that you will lead them that you will guide them through all manners of truth you will show them just how good you are you will show them father that you are a good good father that you can prove yourself you can do you're not going to lead them like others have left them you're not going to forsake them because that was your promise in your word so we stand on that, God, and we're thanking you that as they learn your promises, that they want to become more intimate with you. And as they get to know you, they fall more deeply in love with you, Father. And then they begin to trust you like never before because you've proven yourself and you shall prove yourself time and time again to them. And so we're thanking you, God, for you coming and living into their lives. And God, thank you for not having an expectation for us to be perfect. But thank you, God, for you want us to progress in you. And so we're thanking you, Father, that as we come as little children, you allow us to grow up in you, Father. And we bless you for it now. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah and amen and amen. 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 And I hope something was said tonight that will bless your life. Uh, that will shift your life. And so tonight you can uh, rest in not knowing. But I pray that your minds are clear. So God can start to show you some things. See, often when we know something, what God shows us, we filter it through what we know. When we come to the place where we say, God, I'm not sure, I don't know. Then God is able to give us a picture, a clear picture. So we're able to see things with no filter. Then we can really see what God wants to do in our life. Amen. Clap your hands one more time and give God praise right there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It's offering time in the place. Amen. And online. It's offering time. There are four ways to give. You go to our website. You can actually bring it on in purpose in, in person on Sunday. Um, and then uh, you can go to our P.O. Box 451256, Houston, Texas 77245. You can go to our mobile app and go to your app on an Android or on a uh, Apple phone. Type in GTTWC and put up give the five. Maybe to sow and give there wherever you are. For those that are paying your tithes, we pray God's blessings over your life, over your house, over your job, especially over your mind as He begins to pour back into you things that that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. You didn't enter the heart of man things that God has prepared for you. I pray that every tither God would open up a prepared door something that you have not seen or understood that God began to pour back into your life. I see you, Mika. God bless you. Good to see you. And so, uh, that's it for tonight. But listen, uh, on tomorrow, Minister Blunt's birthday is tomorrow. That's one of the first trustees when I got to this church. His birthday is on tomorrow. And then Friday, Russell Morgan's birthday is on Friday. And we're celebrating people. Uh, and then on... Next week, we'll not be having Bible study. We'll be online. I want you to log in. I am a host pastor. You are a host church. We'll be there Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and Thursday night. And you'll log on through the, either their church page or my page. I'll be on every night. When we go live at 7 o'clock, I'll probably go live when it comes to something. Uh, so you'll be able to, uh, like 7.03, and you'll be able to log in. I can chat with y'all. I think the internet works in that pretty good. I'll be able to chat with some of y'all at certain times. Uh, giving night is Thursday night for Apostle. So if you want to come out, you want to pick a night, come out and have a wonderful time. It's going to be very, very good. For those that are registered, please see me for your voucher. Uh, it's for day services, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and Thursday night. And so we'll not be having Bible study here. We'll be all be online Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And the ones who are coming, any night service is free. So if you want to be, you want to come, if you want to save gas, just log on. I can't log on. I can't. I can't. I could. I put it on my big screen. Like I'm in the front. Is that I can't do that. So, uh, and then on the next Sunday, first is preaching. Sun is coming Sunday. Yeah. Uh, 
and we go to Apostle Hayes, going through my schedule in my mind. Then that Saturday is my mom's birthday. I'll be at her house. And then that next Sunday is super celebration. Is that right? Man, it's going to be a wonderful time. Super celebration, October 22nd at 10 a.m., uh, in person and live. Those that, you know, you know how we do it. If you're not here, we won't be doing the offering online. Amen. People can't handle that. They can't handle that kind of spirit. And so we'll be on uh, doing what we do, and then you'll log in and you'll give and send your receipt. And uh, we prepare for that day, man. I'm so ready for what God is going to shake and rattle. And then the next Sunday, uh, we won't be here that Sunday either. I won't tell it online yet. We won't be here that Sunday. We'll be going live at about 10.05 or 10.15 on that Sunday as well. Amen. Amen. Any more announcements? October 28th. 28th, I go to Impartation Worship Center. I'm preaching for Pastor Phyllis Kennedy. That's on a Saturday at 2 o'clock. Uh, we got, she's in another whole big building, so all y'all come and go on Saturday. Um, you can wear jeans. So just come. Just come. I want y'all to come on 2 o'clock. Go shopping. Do all y'all shopping. Go to brunch. And then meet me at 2 o'clock. And then come back to church Sunday. Amen. Amen. Any more announcements? We are praying for Israel. I don't know how I got a video. I got a video of a house blowing up on the street and uh, how many missiles were being shot back. And they were saying they couldn't stop the missiles. They said, how would you feel if you were watching your neighbor's house blow up next to your house, not knowing if it was yours or not? And so we're definitely praying for them. Uh, we're praying for both sides, actually, because not that we want to hear peace and end the world. We want to make sure we're obeying what God says. We're praying. Uh, for people everywhere. Listen, there's some people right here in Houston that are in war. Got it? They're in war with themselves right now. And so we have to be praying, prayerful, and praying for one another. Amen. Any more announcements? Amen. Facebook and YouTube. It's been amazing. We'll see y'all here on Sunday morning. God bless y'all. Go follow us on all our social media platforms, on our Facebook, on our YouTube. You have a wonderful week. And uh, do everything God's called you to do this week, and we'll see you on Sunday to celebrate it. Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye. Have a good one. Y'all clap your hands for our Facebook, YouTube audience.